If I can get through this video, that will be an accomplishment because all I can think about is Avatar The Last Airbender. Hey friends, it's Ren. Today we are going to be doing a little birthday haul. If you're wondering, my birthday was on April 26th, um, so it's been a while, but I had to place the orders and I ordered from Book Depository, so if you've ever ordered from Book Depository, you know that it takes a hot second for these books to get here. So now that I have my entire haul at my disposal to show you guys, I'm gonna do that right now. <laughs> first, I'm gonna start with Barnes and Noble. So the first book that I got from there is, if not winter, it's very reflective because it's so white. Um, it's the Sappho Fragments translated by Ann Carson. The reason that I got this partially, first of all, I just wanted to read more Sappho and just poetry in general. This is the favorite translation of Emmy, a booktuber that I really like. Her channel is just called Emmy. I will link it down below or I will link it above, but I just, adore her and I trust her judgment so I decided to get the Anne Carson translation and I've heard really good things about Anne Carson just in general even outside of like her translation work so I'm very excited to read it. Next I have Maurice by E.M. Forrester. This is just a book that I've seen constantly in like dark academia circles. I know that people really really enjoy it. Um, I know that it is semi-autobiographical about Ian Forrester's experience with being a gay man in the Edwardian time period, so that all sounds right up my alley. I'm a little concerned about the obvious homophobia that will probably be present in this, just because I feel like I've established by now something that kind of bothers me, but I'm willing to tough it out in order to read what I have heard to be a very, very good novel, so. Next, I have the poetry of John Keats. I've been wanting to read more poetry lately, specifically romantic poetry I want to get into because I read a little bit in college, and even in high school, and I just liked it. <laughs> so I thought I should, you know, try to get more into it. And that is why I got this. Also, it's like one of those $5 books. It's kind of like the Barnes & Noble brand that's like at the end cap type thing. So that's why I got it. <laughs> Similarly, I got Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. First of all, I like this cover. I don't know. I just like it. It looks really cool. It's probably one of my favorite covers that I've seen for this. Um, very understated, but I like that in a cover. I have been planning on reading this for so long and I just haven't, so I thought maybe I should just put it on my shelves. You know, it was pretty cheap. I think it was like five dollars or something, so I'm glad to have it now. I'm hopefully gonna read it. I don't know if I'm gonna save it for the spooky times or if I'm gonna read it sooner, but regardless, it's there. Next, we have Tyrant, Shakespeare on Politics by uh, Stephen Greenblatt. If you had to take any Shakespeare class in college, I would assume you would know who Stephen Greenblatt is. He's like probably the most famous Shakespeare scholar that's alive right now. I really miss reading like literary theory, especially literary theory on Shakespeare and stuff, so I just picked this up. I was interested. I don't know what to say. I really like political analysis of most literary works, so this this was right up my alley. <laughs> Next, I have My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I have heard things about this. I've heard mixed reviews, so I am very interested in reading it. It is about a girl who has a relationship with her teacher when she's in school. I think she's like 14-ish. Um, but she's definitely too young to be having a relationship with her teacher, that's the important thing. And it is, I think, flashes between her time experiencing that and then later on when she's reflecting on the relationship. So, yeah, I've heard that this is a really intense book. I don't know if I'll be reading it anytime soon just because of the way that the world is. I don't know if I'm ready to read this, but regardless, I'm glad to have it on my shelves. I feel like I'm really dark. Is that better? <laughs> Next, I have The Midnight Lie by Marie Rutkowski. Rutkowski? I don't know how to say that fluidly. I have zero, zero idea what this book is about. I have, n I know it's a fantasy and that there's a female-female relationship. So that's about all I heard. I liked the cover, if we're being perfectly honest, and hearing that there is a female-female relationship, I feel contractually obligated to uh, pick it up. So I'm very excited to read this one. I think Heather from Aphrodite Reads said that she enjoyed it. So that's something. And finally, I have Felix Ever After. If you have not seen my wrap up for, what month is it? <laughs> my wrap up for May, um, you should. So you can see how much I loved this book and how it's the best YA I've ever read. YA contemporary fantasy 
and it's it's contemporary but I'm saying like of all the things in the YA genre this is my favorite that I've ever read it's by Case and Calendar <sighs> yeah just pick it up honestly it, 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 it was so good I can't even speak it was just so good I loved it so yeah great great book and beautiful cover oh my god are we kidding we have three books now that I got from thrift books this is kind of my first it's not my first time getting from thrift books but it's my first time when I've wanted specific editions and I was kind of nervous because like it's hard with like used books you don't really know what you're gonna get but I was very pleased to see that these were all the correct editions first I have a portrait of the artist as a young man yes <laughs> by James Joyce um, I'm really interested in reading James Joyce I want to read more Irish and Scottish writers I feel like they kind of get push to the side a little bit in favor of English writers so I'm definitely interested. I have double winners on my shelf already um, but I really wanted to get this one because I've heard that this is like the best place to start with James Joyce so I'm very excited about it. Next I have the selected poems and prose for Percy Shelley. I told you I wanted to read more romantics and this you know I have a lot here. Um, I've read some of Percy Shelley's work obviously one of my favorite the mask of anarchy percy shelley but i just i just want to read more so that's why i got this giant ass book <laughs> next i have the metamorphoses by ovid i just wanted to read it that's really it that's the long and short of it um it's like one of those necessary reading things if you like classics you know like the greek and roman type classics so that's why i got it next we have book depositories so First, I have this edition, this beautiful Bloomsbury modern classic edition of The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I've read this book. I love this book. It's in my top five favorite books of all time, probably. So I just wanted this edition because it's so beautiful. It's so much better <laughs> than the US version. So yeah, I love it. It's just gorgeous. And that's why I wanted to get it. I'm shallow like that. Next, I have The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This is another one that I've already read and already owned, but the other one that I have is kind of falling apart at the seams. So I thought I should probably get a new copy and I like this one. It just looks so classic to me. So yeah. Next, I have Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh. Is it Evelyn Waugh? I don't know what else it would be. Evelyn Way, Evelyn Waugh. Hey guys, I'm editing now, but I just wanna let you know, I did a cursory Google search. I was mostly right about the last name. It looks like there's some conflicting information on that, but Waugh seems to be the general consensus. The thing that I was very, very wrong about is that it's pronounced Evelyn, not Evelyn. I've never in my whole entire life heard that name pronounced Evelyn, but it is, so keep that in mind as I mispronounce it for the rest of this video. <laughs> I've just heard so many things about this. I have heard that I would like it by multiple people who have read it. I don't know what this is about. I hear a lot of people classify it as dark academia or put it in that sort of like thing that you're supposed to read if you want to capture the aesthetic and usually books like that I tend to want to read because I tend to like them so that is why this one is on the list. Next I have A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood. I love Christopher Isherwood. He wrote Christopher and His Kind which is his memoirs and it's I think my favorite memoir I've ever read. I have seen the movie but it was a long time ago and from what I recall it is about a gay man who is suffering from depression after grief from his partner dying I believe. This is gonna be sad but I'm ready probably maybe for it. Next I have Complete Stories by Dorothy Parker. Dorothy Parker is just one of those people you just want to read. Um, she's like known for being clever and witty and I really like writers like that so I just was interested in picking up her stuff. This was fairly cheap so I was like you know what why not it's for my birthday why not indulge myself in some Dorothy Parker witticism so that is why that is added on to this list. <laughs> Next, I have Euripides' Medea and Other Plays. I don't know what's in this. Medea, Hecabe, Electra, and Heracles. That's what's in this. So um, again, like with Ovid, I just wanted to have it on my shelves. You know, I really like Eurip I really <laughs> like Euripides. Um, I like the back eye a lot. So that's like my one of my favorite plays slash works of classical literature of all time. So I'm excited to read the other plays. Next, I have some very pretty editions of Jane Austen classics. So we have Pride and Prejudice, Emma, 
and Sense and Sensibility. If you can believe it, I do not have any Jane Austen on my bookshelves as of, well, until I got these. I got all of the Austen books that I've read from the library and that's this that's true with most classics which is why you're probably seeing so many classics in this haul. I just want to have some more on my shelves so that is what I endeavored to do with this giant ass order. Similarly I got Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte which is in a very similar sort of uh Penguin Classics Edition, Vintage Classics. It's just, they're just so pretty. I am gonna try to reread Jane Eyre. Uh, I did not like it when I read it both times, but I'm hoping that when I'm reading it outside of school, it will change my perception. I already know that I don't like Mr. Rochester. I don't like the romance of this book, <laughs> um, if you can call it that, in good conscience. I wrote a really good and interesting paper on religion in this book. Sometimes I write the best papers on books that I didn't enjoy, which is kind of sad. <laughs> so now we're moving on to Book Outlet. Keeping on with the classics theme, I have Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. I have never read Catch-22. I have missed a lot of the like classic sci-fi books. I've only really read Brave New World and Fahrenheit 451 and I did read Slaughterhouse 5 but I didn't really pay that much attention to it. I hope the professor that I TA'd for in the class that I was supposed to read Slaughterhouse 5 for does not watch this video. Matt, I'm sorry if you're watching. <laughs> but regardless, I want to read more um, which is why I bought Catch-22. I don't know what it's about. I know it's a dystopian sort of future. Next I have Beowulf which is translated by J.G. Nichols. Um, I actually liked Beowulf when I had to read it. I had to read it for my British literature class, um, but we only read certain sections. We didn't read the whole thing, so I plan to read this and annotate it. Just get into it. Most of these I'm like excited to take my time with because I feel like when you're in school, it's really hard to take your time with stuff because you don't have that much time to take. Again, part of why I got all these classics is I just want to read them and like savor them, which sounds so nerdy, but I don't know what to tell you. I'm a nerd. Next, I have another Evelyn Waugh or Evelyn Way book. It's Handful of Dust. I just got this because it was super cheap and I was already getting Brideshead Revisited and I was like, why not? You know, I had to hit that free shipping minimum because Lord knows I can't pay for shipping, but I can pay for another book. Next, we have Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Again, you guys are seeing there's a big, big classics theme in this. I read Tale of Two Cities, I think, when I was a freshman in high school. And I remember saying specifically, first of all, I did a great, like, poster board. I, like, dipped the paper in coffee so it would look antique -y, and I, like, set it on fire on the edges. It was beautiful. That's the hardest I've ever worked on anything. But anyway. <laughs> I remember thinking this story is really good, but I just can't stand the writing. So I'm hoping that if I reread it, this was literally like $4. Um, so I picked it up and I'm hoping that if I reread it now that I'm older and can probably understand the writing style a little better, that I will enjoy it much more. Also, I just really like the cover. Isn't it nice? I think it's nice. Next, we have Confessions of an English Opium Eater by Thomas De Quincey. Yes. So this is about what the title says it's about. It's Confessions of an English Opium Eater. It's someone who uses opium and he's talking about his experiences with opium. I just find the opium crisis to be a really interesting period in history that is really under talked about. You just hear about certain other historical aspects of the world more than others and this is one that I don't hear often enough. So I'm excited to read this from a first person account perspective. Next, we have maybe my most questionable purchase, which is Wuthering Heights. I don't remember much of my opinion on Wuthering Heights, but someone asked me, I think it was on Chandler's live show, someone asked me how I felt about Wuthering Heights and I was like, you know, I could take it or leave it. And then I realized I shouldn't have said an opinion because I don't remember how I felt about it. But I felt like that was probably the equivalent of I'll take it or leave it. Regardless, it's another one of those classics that I feel like I should read and it was just so cheap again on Book Outlet that I was like, all right, let's do it. And I like this. This makes it so much easier to like carry around because it won't, you know, mess up the pages when it's inside my bag. So this is a great addition. <laughs> okay, we're on the last two books. Neither of them are classics. So if you're bored of that by now, you have a reprieve. So we have Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. Um, I heard Peru's Project Regan 
uh, is it Regan or Reagan? Oh my god, I can't remember. Peru's Project. She read this and she said it was good and I saw it on, again, I just saw it on Book Outlet for a really cheap price and I was like, all right, let's, let's give it a shot. Um, and I'm looking for more adult fantasy. I am kind of trying to lean away. I literally have a YA fantasy in front of me that I'm about to show you next, but like generally speaking, I'm trying to lean away from YA fantasy. There's nothing wrong with it. Some of my favorite books are YA fantasy, don't get me wrong. I just wanna just branch out into more adult fantasy. That's, that's the long and short of it. So I don't know what this is about. I feel like a lot of my hauls, that's a common sentiment in every book that I talk about. But I just, yeah, I wanna read more adult fantasy, so here it is. And finally, I have The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. I read Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw, and it was just a really nice, like, palette cleanser. It's a good, this is gonna sound insulting, but it's really not. I feel like she's a good, like, writer between books type writer. Like, if you're gonna read something heavy and you want something between to sort of make sure you don't fall into a too deep of a depressive state, I feel like Shay Earnshaw is the writer for you. She just writes so fluidly and it's so nice and her description is so beautiful. So I am excited to get into this one as a book between books. Again, don't know what this is about, but because it's Shay Earnshaw and I just really was captured by her writing style more than anything else, I think that I will enjoy it and that it will be a pleasant read for me. That is it, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me for this very late birthday haul. Um, I hope you all are doing well. I hope that you are staying safe, that you're getting a lot of reading done or not, if that's what you're choosing. Recently, I've not been getting a lot of reading done because I've mostly just been watching Avatar and thinking about Avatar because I've never seen it before and I'm watching it for the first time. So if you want to talk to me about Avatar, my comment section is open. Please let me know what nation you're from. Personally, every quiz that I've taken has said that I'm a firebender, so are we surprised? <laughs> Thank you guys again for joining me, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye! Sages, bang up by the barn, and the pages of un